Hello, and welcome back to the Velvet Room. I am Kaluna, an attendant of Master Igor, here to oversee the Persona Compendium. Today's topic will be a little different than usual. Most Personas are from the form of a hero or deity. Today's topic will be on a legendary item given Persona form, the Palladian. Of course, there will be spoilers for the events of Persona 3, so for those who have not yet made that journey, turn back now. So, shall you join me for another story today? Let us spin a tale. The Palladian, also called Palladium, was a cult image of worship mentioned primarily in the Iliad. The Palladian was a wooden statue that had been granted to Troy to serve as a symbol of safety and protection. The Palladium was fashioned by Athena and named after Pallas, the daughter of Triton, who had been slain by Athena accidentally in combat. The two were dueling with spears, and Zeus, afraid his daughter would lose, distracted Pallas, and Athena attacked her, thinking Pallas would avoid the blow. In honor of her friend, Athena created the Palladian in her image and would take on Pallas' name in tribute to her. As time went on, Pallas began to merge with Athena as a singular entity in the myths, just as later the Romans would identify Athena as Minerva. Therefore, scholars have found that the Palladian is said to be carved in either Pallas or Athena's image, depending on if the two have been combined or not. Interestingly, the way Zeus distracted Pallas was with an item called the Aegis, a mythical token worn by either Zeus or Athena that has been interpreted as a variety of objects, sometimes an animal skin or a shield, bearing the face of a gorgon. Ageless and immortal, the Iliad describes it making a sound of a myriad of roaring dragons, and it bears a hundred golden tassels. Sometimes the tassels are imagined to be the snakes of the gorgon's head, when described as a skin, the monster it comes from varies. A gorgon, a chimera, and even once the giantess Pallas, not to be confused with Pallas, the daughter of Triton. Over time, to be under someone's aegis meant to be under their protection. Troy's gift of the Palladian was part of the city's founding myth, and therefore it was seen as an object of worship that represented the fortune and protection of the gods. During the Trojan War, the captured prince Hellenus revealed to the Greeks that the city would not fall so long as the Palladian remained in the city walls. Diomedes and Odysseus snuck into the city and stole it, allowing the Greeks to defeat Troy through the trap of the Trojan horse. The Palladian was brought to Rome, where it stayed for some unknown period of time. It was believed to have been brought to Constantinople by Constantine the Great, but its whereabouts continue to remain a mystery. Over time, a palladium came to mean anything that provided safety or protection. Several Christian texts from the 17th century referred to palladians as sacred relics used in military situations such as protecting a city. These were usually icons depicting various divine figures in Christian ideology, such as Jesus Christ and the Mother Mary. Overall, the palladium serves as an image of protection, and it is most commonly depicting a human form of a divine figure. The Palladium is a representation of divine favor, and with it, spreads hope. Palladian is the initial persona of Aegis, an android created by the Kirijo group to serve as a weapon against shadows. The Seas group discover her while on vacation in Yakushima, and Ikutsuki reveals to them that she is going to join their team. Aegis was immediately drawn to our guest, though she was unaware of their connection at first. Ten years prior, Aegis had been sent to defeat the 13th Shadow Arcana, Death, to prevent the coming of Nyx and the end of the world. Aegis, unable to defeat Death, sealed him away inside the body of a nearby child who was the only survivor of a car crash. Naturally, this boy grew up to become our guest, and Aegis was racked with guilt over what she did. She became even more protective of him when Ryoji Mochizuki, an avatar of Death, was introduced to the group sensing his true nature as death. At first, Aegis doesn't display much human emotion, but as she spends more time with the Seas group, she begins to experience it. She does not believe she is capable of feeling, but that is clearly not the case. Ikutsuki was able to reprogram her and use her to capture the Seas group on Tartarus as sacrifices to Nyx, but she was able to overcome it when she cannot bear to kill our guest. Aegis was heavily damaged and needed to be repaired, and once she returns to the group, she calmly explains how easily she could be replaced and rebuilt with the same programming. With Nyx's arrival imminent, 
She is frustrated at her inability to protect the people she cares about. She wants them to take Ryoji's offer to wipe their memories, to live the rest of the month without the fear of the coming apocalypse, since she registers that as the more humane choice. Aegis laments her inability to shed tears for others, but her friends tell her that her sadness is real, and that even if they lose, they still want to fight Nyx. Aegis is amazed by them, and says that her new purpose is to live alongside them all, and that she gave herself that purpose, rather than someone else. Palladian then transforms into Pallas Athena. After our guest's death, Aegis was desperate for answers, and she was granted the wildcard ability previously used by our guest. She even loses the ability to summon her original personas, instead summoning Orpheus. Aegis throws away everything about herself in search for the truth, in effect, destroying that part of her. This gave birth to Metis, her sister, a physical representation of Aegis's newly gained humanity. And it isn't until she and Metis rejoin that she can wield Pallas Athena again. In a way, Aegis embodies the Palladian itself. It is human-looking, but not human. Aegis can pass for human, but is an android. Her programmed purpose is the protection of humanity, and Palladians were thought to be a form of protection for a city. Aegis is viewed as a weapon, not a person with feelings, by Akutsuki and the Kirijo group. When the Seas group are told about a weapon having escaped, they have no idea that the girl they saw on the beach is that very weapon. And, just as the Palladium is powerful but capable of being taken, Ikutsuki is able to reprogram Aegis against her will. Aegis is aptly named. Like the Palladian, the Aegis is seen as a form of protection in battle. It is also due to the use of the Aegis that an unwilling person was caught in the crossfire. Just as Pallas was an innocent victim, our guest was accidentally involved in Aegis's battle with death. Athena's guilt over Pallas's fate is mirrored in Aegis's protection over our guest. Even when her memories of the event were erased, that protection is still part of her. Palladian's persona design reflects Aegis's personality as well as her initial lack of one. Its overall form looks like most of the story it is derived from. It looks like a Greek statue with elements from both Pallas and Athena. The helmet is very iconic to Athena, but the Palladian's main face and body look to resemble the Palladian of Troy. It starts out looking very much like a statue, with a blue palette for the face and dress. The gold of the helmet, breastplate, pauldrons, and belt are also reminiscent of the Greek myths, which describe Athena donning gold armor when she went into battle. There is a small face on the breastplate. This is one iteration of the Aegis. Several depictions of Athena show this on her breastplate in varying sizes. Here, it is small and not very noticeable, which reflects how little of Aegis's own personality is shown in this form. Palladian opens up to hide a giant spear, showing underneath the human facade the true weapon hidden within. This is how Aegis initially views herself, a weapon bearing a human disguise. The spear is also reminiscent of Pallas and Athena's battle, as Athena killed Pallas by using a spear. Palladian uses no elemental magics, and her main attacks are physical in nature. She is weak to electrical attacks, fitting for the persona of an android who would also be weak against such things. When Palladian is summoned, she is surrounded by electrical energy to indicate her mechanical nature. Aegis's main color of her body is white, which is interesting since Palladian doesn't have any white on it. Again, this shows that this persona was engineered for Aegis without any input from her own thoughts and desires. This makes sense, as she was created in a lab. When Palladian evolves into Pallas Athena, suddenly the blue color is changed to white, reflecting Aegis understanding herself more and giving herself her own purpose. The face and body no longer separate. Instead, it looks like Palladian has taken on a human form. The small Aegis has been transformed into a huge one, face and center, on Pallas Athena's shield. Aegis now wants to protect those she cares about for her own sake. Just as Aegis has recognized her own humanity, Palladian evolves from merely an image of Athena to the physical form of her. Overall, Aegis's persona embodies the way that she and others initially view her. An item, something that looks human but on the inside isn't, and it doesn't really reflect her individuality. It is the most traditional looking of the Seas group, ironic considering how mechanical some of the others are in comparison. Once Aegis recognizes that she does indeed have feelings, she is able to make choices for herself and that recognition causes Palladian to evolve. Like her namesake, Aegis is front and center, ready to protect those she loves, no matter the cost. 
Thank you for joining me here in the Velvet Room. I hope you have enjoyed your stay here. Feel free to return again, and we can read more from the compendium. If you believe our social bond has grown, feel free to show it in the form of a like or subscribe. My name is Kaluna, and I look forward to your next visit. everyone, as this is a Patreon-sponsored episode, I wanted to take this opportunity to give a quick reminder about how Patreon works. It's a website that allows you to pledge a certain amount of money per month to your favorite content creators, allowing us to actually make a career out of this. Depending on how much you pledge, you get a variety of rewards in exchange. Some of my rewards for you include having your name in the credits, joining my Discord chat room, and getting early access to my videos. Or, at the highest tier, you can even choose something for me to review, such as with this episode. Every little bit counts, so even if you can only do $1, that really builds up over time and helps me to make this show even better. Thanks for your support, and I'll see you in the next video.